Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create cute ring dishes like this one. So you can see how this one looks and I'm going to be showing you how to create it in different shapes, sizes and also with different textures and colours. So the first thing you're going to need is to have rolled out a sheet of white Prima and here are some one that I have, I have four at the moment and you want it to be on your thickest setting or at about two millimeters thick. Then you want to select some texture stamps. And now I have a few here. I have this really nice Helen Braille one, which is called Conga Line. And if you're looking for these texture stamps that I'm going to show you here, so here's the um, Helen Braille one, and here is the uh, Chrissy Friesen one I want, which is called Van Gogh. Van Gogh, sorry. Um, and you can get both of these off of Linda's Art Spot, I do believe. So I'll give you, leave a link to that in the description below. So you'll be using those two. And then I'm also going to be using two of my own texture stamps. One is coral, and you're not really be able to see that properly here. And one is my indented rock pool, I do believe. So I'll leave links to those as well. And so let's get started. So I'm going to start with the Helen Braille one. And I'm just going to take my clay, position it, and now you have a choice of either dusting some cornstarch on here and then pressing it in, or you can use a sponge. And I'm going to use a sponge to start, because I would prefer to keep the back, um, I would prefer to keep it from being covered in cornstarch because I'll probably want to put a backing on this later and the cornstarch prevents pieces of clay sticking to each other. So once I've got it started I will then continue to press with my fingers and I'll do that the entire way up the stamp. Okay and here is the imprint you should end up with. Really nice crisp and clear as you can see. So I'll put that to the side and I'm going to do the same for all of our other stamps and then I'm going to show you how they look when they're done. Okay, so you've seen the Congo line one. Now this is the coral one that I have, so hopefully you can see that a bit better now. And this one is the um, indented tidal pool one. And finally, this is the Starry Night, oh not Starry Night, Van Gogh one. Right, so now each of those are going to have a different colour. So we'll start with Helen Braille's one. And I'm going to decide what bowl I want to put this on, because that distinct decides what size cutter I'm going to be using. So I think I'm going to be using this square bowl and this this statement rounded um, square and you can see that it fits nicely with your bowl. So you should get a cutter that matches the bowl that you want to use. So I'm just going to pop the cutter down and now I'm not going to cut yet. I'm just going to trim away fair amount of the excess. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to be using alcohol inks and alcohol inks stain clay and you won't be able to use the white as white afterwards. So just keep that excess, we'll probably use that later. And for now that is roughly the right size for us. Then you want to choose your colours of alcohol ink. And now I'm going to be using pinata alcohol inks because they have a really nice bright colour to them whereas the ones that I usually use, um, the Ranger ones, they generally are a little bit more muddy. So these ones I'm going to go for this really nice kind of green and yellow colour palette. So what you want to do is you want to grab some 99% alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, here we are. 
and I want you to just gently pat your piece down onto your work surface. I'm working on a ceramic tile, a glass tile will also work. And give it a good spray of this alcohol so that it's soaking. Then take your bottles of ink and I'm just opening each of them. Now I just want you to take it and pop drops of ink onto the surface. And because we wet it before, it will spread really nicely and it will intermingle with each other and it will look really nice. And you can see how bright those colours are. And I might actually bring some brown into this. So I'll use this brown just to tone it back just a touch. Uh, just a different splash of colour in here. I think that looks better. There we are. Then you'll need to use a brush quickly to just tap in the areas that have not had the ink flow onto them and just gently use that brush. I'm just going to wipe it off again so that I'm not intermingling the colours too much. There we are, because you don't want any white spots. And although the alcohol does evaporate, it takes a little while to, so you have a fair amount of time to work with this and get it to your liking. Right, I'm quite happy with it. Now you want to grab a wet wipe. Just want you to gently drape it over the surface and tap. And that is going to soak up a lot of the excess alcohol ink. And I don't want you to rub, I just want you to dab over the surface. And you can see that those colours become a lot more distinguished now. It's not so dark. And just by dabbing, you're just soaking up any excess. Okay. And I'm just going to quickly clean my hands. And you'll just let that sit for a moment to dry. So in the meantime, while you're waiting for it, you can quickly clean up a little bit of the alcohol that is uh, spilled around. Maybe blow on it a bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that 99% isopropyl alcohol and we're going to spray again. Not as much as last time. And you're going to just take your wet wipe and you're going to rub over the surface so that you're just rubbing against the highlight, the uh, raised areas of the texture. And you want to be careful because the alcohol does soften the clay and so it can uh, rip and crack. So you want to be careful when you're doing this. And you'll need to swap areas on your uh, wet wipe every once in a while because it actually is picking up the bottom, the top layer of clay. And we're going to do this a few times, and what it's going to do is it's going to make the top part lighter than the bottom. So when we flatten it out, you will be able to still see the texture, even though it is flat. Okay. And so we've got as much as we can. And then once you've done with that first lot, I want you to spray it again and continue doing it until you are happy with how um, it looks. You can go as long or as little as you want. I'll just continue. Okay, and then after a while you're going to find that the clay is a little too delicate to rub after spraying. So spray directly onto your 
wet wipe and then rub a specific area swap spots again spray onto your wet wipe again and continue doing that because I can only do what I showed you previously about three times before the clay starts to disintegrate a bit so once that starts spray directly onto your wet wipe and wipe and try to go with the grain of the texture like here's a line you want to go along the length of that line and carry on until you are happy with how the texture appears okay and here is how it should look somewhat after you are finished now the last step to do is going to be to spray it completely again with your 99% alcohol and just, just give it a dab and then blow on it and you can do this up to three times and what we're doing essentially is we're drying out the clay because that's going to be what creates a crackle later because the 99% alcohol dries it out so then blow on it And here is how it should look. Then you're just going to gently pick that up with your blade. And be careful because this is almost like cured on the top here because of that uh, alcohol that we used. So just give your tile a very quick wipe down. And what I want you to do is I want you to place that face texture side down. Bring over another piece of clay. And this one is about one and a half millimeters thick. just pop that on the back and what this is going to do is it's going to give it stability because right now this is fairly uh, fragile due to the fact that it has been somewhat cured then dry your tile and place that down I'm just going to wipe off my blade because we have alcohol on that due to picking this up and just trim away the white again Okay. And now I'm going to make a few veneers like this, just using different colours. So I'll show you how to finish this veneer quickly. And then we're going to be using our other stamps. So if you want to skip forward in the tutorial, that is fine. So that you don't have to see all the veneers. But I thought you would like to see multiple veneers. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to bring over a roller. I'm very gently going to start rolling this flat and we're only expecting a few crackles in here we're not expecting a huge amount we want the texture to mostly remain with just a few crackles and the more you spray that 99% isopropyl alcohol the more cracks you can expect so depending on whether you want a few cracks or a lot of cracks spray more spray less and I'm just stretching this and hopefully you can see that there are cracks in here just give that another roll and then once I'm done here I just want to check for air bubbles because I can see one or two I think well that might be me just check no Okay, and I just basically am going to continue rolling this until the uh, texture has been flattened and it has a somewhat flat feel. You're never going to get rid of the texture fully so that it is a completely smooth veneer, but you should be able to get rid of it enough that it is flat. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with that. And you'll find that our square fits very happily. In there. And I'll show you what to do with the scraps either in this tutorial or in a later tutorial, we'll see. Because the scraps can be very pretty. Now the last thing you want to do is you want to prep the back. And you're going to need some sort of a um, light texture, such as the sponge texture. You can also use sandpaper. So all I'm going to do is gently going to press this onto the back 
And how you colour the back is completely up to you. You can use alcohol inks, though there is a risk of the um, alcohol inks getting onto the front of the texture and ruining your um, pattern. So I prefer to either use um, mica powder, pastels or ink. Not alcohol ink, just normal ink where you can actually control it. Okay, and I'm just making sure that I've got that well textured. Okay, and then I'm going to select some mica powders. I have this really nice kind of goldish green, it's apple green, gold, and dark brown. Okay. I want you to just take these and I'm going to actually use a brush to do this. I want you to just brush it across the surface like so. In no particular order. And any mica powders will do, but I'm using the one from my shop, just in my design. Okay. And when I am done, I'll show you what it looks like. But you basically just want to be mixing these together so you can see where the um, brown has mixed with the green. You can see it's gone almost like a goldish colour. So overlap colours, it looks quite nice. And then you should end up with something similar to this. Then just take your brush and make sure that it's all burnished down. And you can even take this again, give it an extra roll. And now you can leave it like that which is what I plan to do. Or you can take your wet wipe, and I'll just show you roughly what to do. You can take your wet wipe and you can just wipe over the surface with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to expose the white again. That's up to you, but I don't think I want to do it with this. We might do it later with another one of the uh, projects. I'm just gonna gently wipe around the edge And there's our front because it's nice and shiny after having rested on this tile a little bit and so that is our first veneer now I will proceed to make the others okay so for the next one I'm going to be uh, using this coral now I had to put cornstarch on the back of this so what I'm going to do to remedy that is I'm just going to take some Kato clear liquid clay and any clear liquid clay will work. Just want you to very gently brush this across the surface. It's best to do this before you start spraying it with that 99% isopropyl alcohol. And this will make it a little bit more sticky again. Because we're going to be putting a backing on this. So this will be too fragile to do this later, so I'm going to do it now. It also help it stick to this tile while we're busy doing our alcohol ink. Okay. There we go. Now you want to choose your colours. And I'm thinking I'm going to go along the line of... Let's see. I think I want to use purple. Um, I think this brown is quite nice as well. And let's see. Torn between red or blue. Let's see. I think I better go with the blue. Okay. So 
it in the right spot for you. Yes. Alright, spray. And then open up your inks. You can see it's already got a few ink crumbs on there. That's all right. Just make sure that it's well sprayed. I don't think I, I think I missed some areas. Okay. I'll grab that blue. Purple. And then finally some brown. I think I want just a touch more blue in some of these areas. Then grab your brush again. Gently tap them over the white spots. The thing is, it's so dark at the moment, you can't actually see how the colours are mingling together, which is what I like about. Um, drying it up a little bit, and you can have a bit of a surprise. Okay, and just make sure that you did get all the white spots, and then you will want to let it soak for just a moment. So I'll probably just let it sit here for maybe um, 30 seconds. While I go dry off my brush. And then just dab that dry. And it's a little hard to see the texture at the moment because it's still fairly dark. But once we start rubbing away at that top surface, we'll really get that texture coming up. Right. Now this texture is a little bit more delicate than the last one. So I'm going to start by spraying directly onto a wet wipe and rubbing and you can see immediately how that starts to reveal your texture now you need to be a little bit more persistent with this one because the uh, texture is a little bit more organic and so these lines in the middle here you need to reach in with your finger and gently rub away some of that ink and basically I'm going to just repeat what I did for the last one. I'll continue spraying and continue wiping and then at the end I'm going to spray it a few times with the 99% alcohol, dry it to get it to have a little bit of a crackly effect towards the end and then I'll put a backing on. But I just want, I'll walk you through that in a second but I'm not going to go into it as in detail as the last one. Okay. And here is how it looks. So now I'm just going to pick that up. And remember, you need to clean your blade after that. Okay. You can see how it looks on the back. Grab a wet wipe, clean that up. And then again, I've rolled out a piece of clay. Trim. And then I'm going to repeat the same on the back of this one as the last one. I am going to add mica powders that complement the alcohol ink. So I'm going to probably be using browns, blues, and purples. Okay, 
and I'm just quickly going to dry the tile so that our clay can stick because we want to flatten this out and I want to show you how that looks that's my favourite part now of course with these um, you could stop around here so that you don't get any of the crackles but I think the crackles just add such personality to the piece so it's up to you but I do like the crackles so I flatten it out enough to see those and also because I prefer to flatten out the texture Then I will do the back quickly. Okay, and here is how it looks on the back. So that is our second one done. And I'm going to pop that to the side. And I'm going to continue with this one. And this one I'm going to pop some liquid clay on the back as well. Before we start, because I had to use a little bit of... um cornstarch as well <clears throat> okay and I've just popped that down onto my tile give it a quick spray like usual and I'm gonna be using some greens I think I want to pop <clears throat> the green here and maybe some here I'm gonna be a bit more deliberate where I put stuff. Then I want some blues over here and I want some more blue along here and then I have a nice dark blue definitely want some here <coughs> excuse me then I've got some brown I would like the brown to be here and here. Maybe just a touch around here. Okay, then I'll just use my brush to move that around. Like so. And it's okay if the colours mingle around a bit. Just make sure that you get it on the white. And if you feel like you need some more alcohol ink, uh, just add some more. And you can see how the colours are really starting to come out here. Okay, then I'll just grab a wet wipe. And just make sure you get it into the recesses in this texture. And now this one you want to be a little bit more careful with. I'm not sure if I've already said this, but it's quite a bit more delicate than the other textures and so you'll need to just be a little bit more careful when rubbing away the surface uh, to get some white exposed just simply because it's more likely to tear okay <clears throat> and I'll give that a spray because I've missed some areas just that big in in the meantime, just start gently rubbing as well. Okay, and then I'll proceed by putting some on the surface of my wet wipe and just rubbing. And it will look really pretty when we're done. Okay, and here is how it looks. Now, I'm very gently going to lift this. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it is cracking quite severely, which is fairly normal. So now I've got a piece of white clay here that I want to pop this on. I just want to lift it very gently onto the piece of clay. Now I've just done that off to the side because it started cracking 
and now I'm just going to clean up the tile. There we are. I'm just going to take a tissue and I'm gently going to press down on this just to get it to stick to the white and also to soak up any excess um, alcohol we might have. Then we'll trim. And each of these is going to be made into a ring dish. And I just wanted to show you multiple ones because each one is going to turn out so different. And even if you use the same texture and the same colours, it will turn out different again simply because um, wherever the colours are put will make it different. And also the fact that. Um, rubbing it off each time is going to make it appear different as well. Now I'm just going to try and rub off a little bit more just to clear it up a bit. Make it a bit more white. Because we've got some alcohol on there. Ah, some alcohol ink on there. And it has made it a little dull. So I'm just going to quickly run my wet wipe over the surface. And you can see that that clears up quite nicely. Now I'm not soaking it, I'm just adding a little bit just to clear it up. Okay, and you can use any texture stamp for this technique. So whichever ones you have will work. And it's also sometimes nice to do it once you've flattened it out a little bit because those areas which you couldn't get to before are now a little bit more accessible, like with these shells here. I can go in there a bit easier and rub away a bit more. And these top bits aren't so um, prone to coming off, so I can rub away a little bit more there as well. Okay, just about done. Yeah, now I'm just gonna dry that again very quickly and then we're going to start flattening it. Just grab your roller and flatten it and you're going to find that some areas are a little sticky still due to the texture that we're using. So then just go in again and dry and clean your roller every once in a while as well and then continue to flatten it. And there you can see that start to flatten there. Yeah, and at this point it's a lot more safe to work with it because um, it's not going to be falling apart on you. Okay, and I'll just continue to roll until it's flat. Okay, and here it is once flattened and here is the back. So I'll pop that to the side. And we're going to move on to the last one, which is this Van Gogh one. So just trim around the outside, like so. And when you're done with that, choose your alcohol ink colours. Okay, and I've just popped some alcohol, some liquid clay on the back so that it sticks to the tile. You can see my hands are starting to get pretty alcohol inked. And today, for this one, I'm going to be using some reds. So I'll just open that up, put that to the side. And I'm going to be using an orange and a yellow. And we'll see if I need brown. Depends on whether it needs to be toned down a bit. We'll just give this a spray. I want it to, although it is supposed to be after a painting that is somewhat black, blue and yellow, I'm going to be making it kind of like a fire pattern with yellows, oranges and reds. But again, as you have seen, you could put some blue and yellow together with this. I really like these pinata inks, they're very bright. 
which is nice. And again, as I said before, if you want to get a nice starter pack, which has all of these colours, plus some others, I think there's a metallic gold and white. If you want some of those, uh, check out Linda's Art Spot. She has a great starter pack. There we are. Gently dab those into place. And by doing this, you're also kind of swirling those colours together. And as I've said before, I'm showing you all of these to give you some ideas for different things you could do for different stamps. If you don't want to see the process over and over again, you're always welcome to just skip forward a bit. Right. Quite like that. Quickly going to clean off my brush. And I think I'm going to leave it this really fiery red pattern without brown. Okay, let it soak for a little while. Then pop a wet wipe over the surface. Just to dry off those spots. Okay. Then, as before, you will wipe away the surface. Okay. Then, when I'm done with that, again, just gonna pop a piece of clay on top of it. And here is how it looks. Absolutely love that away that clay and I will repeat on the back as well with some mica powders there we are let's just see how this looks now once we roll it flat and I've just got a little blue something or other there just get rid of that And if it's really being stubborn, you can always just use your blade to just gently nick it out. Okay, I'm just going to wipe my roller because I had a little bit of glue on there from the previous one. see if this one crackles or not. This one's not crackling as much as the others, but that's fine. I like each one to be completely different. Okay. Just stretch it a bit to convince maybe a few crackles to come through. And I've got some green here that got accidentally spilled on the clay earlier. So I'm going to just gently nick that out. So I don't want that there. Okay. And this is our last veneer. We can now start making some um, ring dishes with these. And of course you could use this technique to make coasters, pendants, whatever you want, but today we are making ring dishes. And there we are. That's the back. And the front. So I pop that to the side and now I'm going to clean up the tile so that we can begin creating our ring dishes. Alright, so I've cleaned up everything and we are now ready to cut out our pieces. So we're going to start with our first one is this and we're going to grab our cutter and I want to position it in a place that I think is the best I think I like it here and then just press down 
and it's quite a large cutter so you want to make sure that you press down properly and you should be able to lift this away and keep it because I'm probably going to be doing a tutorial on that later and uh, because of the uh, mica powder it did not stick to the tile so you might have a little bit of uh, bits and pieces around the edge so we're going to trim that quickly whereas if it did stick to the tile you'd be able to get a nice clean cut but it's very quick to just gently get rid of those little fiddly bits and then later we're going to clean up the edges okay get rid of that Now I'm going to bring over our bowl. Got this really nice square bowl. And any one you have will work. Completely up to you. Okay, and I just want to make sure that that's equal. And then I want to just gently push down. And you're going to find the edges are going to curl. Don't worry about that. Just gently press on them and you'll just convince it almost to take the shape of the bowl now it doesn't have to mould into the bowl perfectly so these edges I'm going to press gently towards the edges of the bowl but they're not going to stick completely and then I'm going to almost bevel these so that I'm pressing them towards the bowl so that that sticks properly And then you'll bake this for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. Now again, you can use any brand to do this technique. Okay, and there we are. And we might leave the edges as they are, or we might simply colour them black. We'll have to see. For now, I'm just going to pop this into the oven and move on to the next one. And for the next one, I'm going to be using this really nice sand dollar cutter and a round bowl. And just position it in the spot that you like. And then press again, make sure you press nice and hard. And that's how we managed to get rid of most of the um, little scraggly bits. So I'll just smooth gently around the edges. And these are really nice gifts. And they're not too difficult to make either, so you could sell them at markets. Just pushing this down gently. I might not make it go down the whole way. Because I quite like that dome that it has there. Okay, and I'm just going to push this side down a touch more. Because you want all the sides to be equal. So these two need to come down a bit more. And this one. Just a touch. Okay, and then I'm just going to leave that one like that and bake that for an hour. Right, next one is going to be this one. And this one, I've got a nice circle cutter for it. And they're cut out quite clean. So you can use all sorts of different shaped bowls to create different um, domes. And as you can see, this one would make quite an interesting coaster as well, if you wanted to do that.
just trying to get it to go down equally. She want all those sides equal. Okay. And then the last one, I want to show you a little trick quickly. We're going to be using roughly the same size cutter. And I think I like this section over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gently going to press down enough to create a mark. And then I'm going to use my craft knife. And that was not completely necessary. I've just done that to give myself a bit of guideline. But you can just do it completely freehand if you want. And we're going to do one with kind of rippled edges. So that it has an organic look to it. So you can do that as well if you don't have cutters. Okay. And then these will all get baked for an hour at Primo's recommend temperature and I'll show you how they look when they are done baking. Okay and here is how they look now that we are done. So now we need to fix up these edges. So I will do this one I think. And I think black would be quite a striking edge. So you can either smear clay along the edge or you can do what I'm about to do and you can pop some liquid clay on. So I'm just going to take some black clay to liquid clay. And I haven't had a chance to try another brand of black liquid clay. I heard that Sculpey has one. So if any of you have tried it, please let me know in the comments below if it's thicker than the Kato liquid clay. Because if so, then I'm going to probably invest in some. Because I would like a thicker clay for this, a thicker liquid clay for this technique. Okay, and you will just gently paint this liquid clay across the edge of your piece, like so. If you don't like that colour, you can use any colour you want. And you can also do it with proper polymer clay instead of liquid clay if you want to. But I think that's going to add quite a nice striking border. And I will repeat this process with all of the other bowls as well. And then I'll pop them in for about half an hour at Primo's recommended temperature. Okay, and here are all of our bowls now that they are out of the oven. And you can see this one I have done with the black border as well. And in a way, it almost looks like um, Japanese soy sauce dishes. I think that's where I'm remembering it from. Might be wrong. But in a way, that's what it reminds me of. So, now you can leave them like that if you want. But I would suggest taking them and a bit of Renaissance wax or Min wax if you can't get hold of the Renaissance wax. And popping a layer of this wax around on the inside of the bowl and also around on the outside because this will seal in your um, metallic pigments as well. And also because it will bring out a shine. So I'm just going to quickly rub a fair amount of wax on here because it's fairly large surface and on the back okay. and then I'll use a buffing tool quickly to just buff it
all you should need to do. And now you can see it's given it a bit of a shine. So I'll repeat that with all of my other bowls and we'll see how they look. Okay, so now they're finished. So I'll just show you each one in detail. You can see it's really nice and shiny. And here's the back. And so you can see that each one has turned out completely different. So you can play around with textures, colours, inks, and see what you can come out with. Because they're really quite pretty. I think this one's probably one of I can't actually have a favourite. I think this one is probably my second favourite. And this will be my third favourite. And this one is my favourite. And that's just simply because I am partial to blues and greens. But that red is also really pretty. And if you're wondering what I used on the back of this one, I used ink and I just brushed it over the back. So you can do that too if you want to. So, I do hope that this tutorial was helpful to you and that you enjoyed it. I certainly did enjoy showing you how to create these um, ring dishes. They're really quite cute and they're going to be used throughout the house so let me know what you thought and also if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and if you would like more tutorials like this one subscribe to my youtube channel and check out my website jessima tutorials i have tons of tutorials on there along with articles courses and other bits and pieces so check that out and if you would like to support this channel so that i can continue posting videos in the future um Maybe think about joining Patreon. I have a Patreon membership where I post tutorials exclusively. And also maybe have a look at my Etsy shop as well where I create tools for the polymer clay. Either one is really helpful and supports this channel going forward. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.